Hey there, welcome to the very first episode of Listings and Lattes, hosted by Tiffany Williams and Marianne Knowles with Team Knowles Tampa Bay. Yay! Yay! First episode of our podcast. Super excited, super, we'll see what happens. We're gonna, just gonna, uh, I've never done a podcast before, have you ever done a podcast? No, hell no. Hell no. So we're just gonna wing it. Please give us some grace. We're just gonna have fun and talk. Uh, what is this podcast gonna be about? So really we want people to get to know us on outside of social media so that we could really keep it real. Uh, Tiffany actually thought of the name keeping it real estate for the podcast, but somebody took it somebody already. Somebody took it already, so she came up with listings and lattes. We came up with listings and lattes. Well, she did. <laughs> and I agree. I liked it. But here's why we came up with listings and lattes, because we like lattes and we also want to feature some local businesses. I think some of the best coffee comes from local businesses. And we also want to talk about real estate in the Tampa Bay area. So there we go, listings and lattes. More importantly, we just wanted to make sure that we're really being our true authentic selves, me included. But when you see people putting things up on social media, it's just so glamorous. It's so glamorous. It's so perfect. And it it certainly isn't. So. And it's funny because I love shows like Selling Sunset. I will binge that on a weekend when it comes out. Uh, it's just not like that, though, in, in real estate. It's just not. It, there's so many emotional moments, highs and lows. You have the best highs in this job, but you also have some really low lows. Really low lows. Well, first, what's the coffee? Okay. So today's coffee, today's... Oh. It's National Latte Day. Woo! How cool is that that our first episode is on National Latte Day? I did not plan yeah. this, folks. It just happened organically like that. Um, but this today's latte is from Urban Grounds, located in downtown Tarpon Springs. Super cool shop. The building's from 1909. They said it's haunted, and I'm all about that. I love, like, haunting stuff. And I believe that. That's a whole, we could have a whole episode just talking about that stuff. I have childhood stuff happening. My house in Boston was haunted, but yeah, different, different times. Another right? episode, because yeah. I would watch that. I mean, yeah. I, would you? It was, <laughs> it was very much. Um, the barista recommended that we get a vanilla macadamia nut latte with oat milk, and that's what we got. It's really good. We're pretty much done with it. I know we're supposed to wait to like try this, but I was so excited to try it's this. It's really good. But anyway, here's what I love is that it's smooth and it's not bitter. It's the flavors are are there and they're, it's they're, delicious. It's really good. Go check them out. Urban Grounds, Tarpon Springs. Okay. So here we are. First podcast. Yeah. Tiffany, let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. Let's talk about the good and the bad. Let's talk about the bad. Okay. So let's, let's discuss, you know, a day to day day in real estate and the emotions involved in it. It's funny because it's, it's, when I first started, and I'm so grateful for you because me and Marianne, Marianne's been with me since the beginning of my real estate career. And I, I love her. One of the many reasons I love you is because you keep it real. Thank you. You keep it real. And that's what, that's what I need. You know, I remember one of my first, my first clients, I met them at an open house and we just clicked like that. And they're like, we're going to get pre-approved. And I was showing them a house and I would, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, this is going to be my first deal. This is so easy. This is great. And then they decided to rent. And I got so emotional about it because I, I was I was so invested. I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to happen. And I called Marianne and she's like, "What did, do you remember what you told me? Get used to it. You said, yeah, suck it up, buttercup. But in, in a loving way. In a loving way. <laughs> in a loving way. But, but I needed to hear that, though. She's like, honestly, in this industry, there are so many more downs than there are ups. Do you remember saying that? Yeah, and I hate to say that, but it's really, it's such an emotional job. Mm -hmm. And I really want to come at people who say that this job is just opening doors. Oh, those people, they, they grind Because the it's not. It's like most of the work isn't even showings. Mm -hmm. It's getting under contract and dealing with the 30 days or more of a transaction. Mm -hmm. And it's putting out fires left and right all day long. It is the most taxing. I'm already a nervous person. I'm already super anxious. So sometimes with this job, even though I can't see myself doing anything else, I'm ready to have a nervous breakdown sometimes. <laughs> That's Honestly. why lattes are amazing and alcohol is- Yeah, is all the better. Oh, and we need it. We you, do. you need it. But again, it's, it's something that we talked about previously is like, 
you know, every day is different. You never know what each day is going to bring. And you every transaction is different. Mm-hmm. So there's so many layers to it that... It's like an emotional onion. It's a, you, you, it's know, really, you peel the layer, you don't know what's going to happen. If you think that something could not go wrong, it's going to go wrong. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be a different wrong than what the last wrong was. Yeah. It's just... Even though you've been doing it for so many years, you're still learning because there's something else that could go wrong that you've never had to deal with before. So it's really a constant learning experience. Yeah. And it's funny because on the transactions that you think are going to be so smooth, everything's been going great. You're supposed to close in two days. You're reaching out to the loan underwriter just to make sure everything's going good. And they're they're like, oh, I need this, 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 this. If we don't have this, we're not closing. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? And I don't know about you, I'm pretty sure you're the same way, but I'm not going to tell my client about any of that stress that we're dealing with behind the scenes because that's our job. Our job is to keep the stress away from them. I'm not going to tell them anything that's going on unless, of course, they have to know about it. I'll get them involved, but why stress them out? Yeah. Buying a home, selling a home, it's already so stressful as it is. I'm taking on all the behind the scenes drama that's going on and that's our job. That's what we do. I've lost so much sleep Mm -hmm. over yeah. Stressing. Oh, absolutely. For my customer. And literally closing days. Can we talk about how stressful closing days are? They are so stressful. Everyone's like, oh, closing days so easy. What's you your just, stress? Oh my gosh. All this stuff, all the it seems I don't know how your closings are, but it seems like on closing day, that's when things go wrong. That's yeah. when things go wrong. Yeah. You schedule things, they don't they don't happen. I've had people have movers scheduled, and I always say Try not to schedule movers on moving day because I'm sorry, closing day because closing day can be chaotic. You never know what's going to happen. So many closing days, things get delayed. Again, these these the underwriters are just trying to cause drama. Money doesn't get wired. They don't have where's the wire? I don't know. They wired it. Well, where's the money? Like, there's so many things that can happen last minute. So yeah, closing days until the papers are signed until until you're fully funded is the best or best words. <laughs> closing day like funds are here we're good to go otherwise it's just stress i have had customers who we had closing and they were leaving the country for closing so they took it upon themselves to wire the money to the title company ahead of time we're not talking about the down payment we're talking about like three hundred and fifty thousand dollars well it got wired to the wrong title company oh and they're out of the country and the title company never told us that they had this money. So we're wondering, well, where's this money? Oh my gosh. And come to find out, Beth, leave it to Beth, the lender, she found where the money was at the wrong title company. And yeah, I mean, it's oh it, when it comes gosh. down to the wire, things can get go mainly. Get it? So. When it comes down to the wire. It comes down to the wire. <laughs> we're, we're, we come up with these puns. Uh, we don't even yeah, mean we yeah. don't even mean to do it. Um, okay, Marin. So tell me, like, how did you get into real estate? So I can't say I got into it because I wanted to. It's the weirdest thing. Although now looking back, I can't see myself doing anything, but it's really strange. So he will never let me say his name because he's super private, but my little angel guy, I used to do property management for him. We'll call him Peter Gumble because that's what he goes by. But he, um, he was an investor in Tampa and always told me to get into it and said, you know, I think you'd be really good at it. And I don't know why, like I listened to him. I was like, okay, I'll take the test. And I took it and really the rest is history. I started off at Lipley and I haven't left and I love it here and I love what I do. And Lipley's our brokerage. Lipley is our brokerage. We're sitting here right now with the office. Um, and I really owe it to Peter Gumble because mm-hmm. he, he was like, you should do this. and. And, and there's another one of our coworkers who has him as a friend too and got That's into amazing. real estate because of him. So, yeah. Thank you, Peter Gumble. Look at you. Yeah. Well, I'm grateful for you because for you. ever since I started real estate, I've always looked at you as a mentor, as somebody I can learn from. And again, I, I just appreciate you always being honest and real with me. I don't need it. I don't need stuff sugarcoated because yeah. it's not easy at all. And there's so many ups and there's so many downs. So I just appreciate you always being there for me and Thank telling you. me like, hey, this is normal. It's going to happen. It's normal. It's yeah. normal. And no matter what, you still get heartbroken and you still get so emotional and, and we may get tougher and learn how to handle it better, but this job could be heartbreaking, mm-hmm. but so rewarding. At the so same rewarding. Time. And, and I feel so honored to be a part of somebody's journey because you know how many realtors there are, let alone the Tampa Bay area, everywhere else. You go on a Facebook group and somebody says, does anybody know a realtor? 
Okay, everybody comes out of the woodwork, myself included. <laughs> There's hundreds of comments. Everybody's aunt, grandma's cat is a realtor. Let's talk about how many like, realtors there are in Tampa Bay. Yeah, how many? Not only in Tampa Bay, but just Pinellas County. Mm-hmm. So Pinellas County is the beach town. So we've got Clearwater, Safety Harbor, Tarpon Springs. 20,000. 20,000. Just, just in Pinellas County. Just in Pinellas County. We're not even talking about Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot. There's a that's lot, a lot of competition. There's a lot of competition. So I take it so I'm so grateful when somebody chooses me out of out of those thousands and thousands. They choose me. I'm so grateful and honored, and I take that so seriously. I take that with pride. Oh, for sure. And and to be part of somebody's story and journey is just. It, I don't know. I take that so seriously. I'm so grateful for that opportunity. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So Tiffany, you're from this area. I grew up in Palm. Harbor. I was born in Dunedin, Meese Country, not Meese Country, Meese Dunedin, uh, raised in Palm Harbor. I used to work at the Blockbuster in Palm Harbor off of Alderman. If any viewers know where that was or used to come visit me, shout out, please. That was her. That was me. I might have checked out your videos for you, um, but I grew up in Palm Harbor. I, would, I also lived in West Chase, and now I live in Odessa, and I used to live in Trinity. So I've lived in every county that I serve, Pinellas, Pasco, and Hillsborough. So clearly you love where you live. I love where I live. And I, my husband was in the Navy, so I got to move around. We lived in San Diego and Washington State, but I feel like that really made me appreciate where I'm from. Definitely. Because when you grow up somewhere and you haven't lived anywhere else, you don't know anything else. Right. So I got to live in San Diego for a while, Washington State, which are both beautiful places, but there's no place like home. There's no place like these beaches. There's no place like these little towns, Dunedin, Safety mm-hmm. Harbor, Tarpon Springs. Like, I don't know. I just, I love where we live. Every town here has its own charm. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's fantastic. So yeah. I'm not from here. No, where are you from? I'm from Massachusetts, the Boston area. And I moved here probably close to 10 years ago now, which is just like a blink of an eye. It's yeah. so crazy. And I love it here. I love everything about living here. Although I still consider... Boston home. Boston's yeah. home. It's home. I love it there. I love the people. It, it's the, a, a complete different group of people. I can't explain it. We're a little rougher around the edges, and, <laughs> but but as loyal as they come, and and that's what I miss. Aside from the food, the food at home is is where it's at. Now, which food do you miss the most from back home? Okay, so fun fact, and I say this all the time, especially for people who know me, because this is like a conversation that I talk about all the time. But the lobster here doesn't have the claws. No claws. And up north, you no have No claws? No claws. Well, you probably think that that's normal. See, I'm allergic to shellfish, so I'm not, I'm not, I don't do lobster, so this is all new to me. I'm so learning so much today. When I tried the lobster here, I was like, first of all, where the heck are the claws? And why is it, why does it look different? It's the Caribbean lobster here. Even the mm. taste of it is like gamey. The main lobster, I love it. There's only a food truck here that has like the main lobster. And- is it got lobster? Yeah. Shout out to Got Lobster. Great stuff. Yeah. Maine. So Maine. you so you miss the, the lobster, the food back home. I miss the food. I miss the pizza. I don't think that the food here is like incredibly good. I hate <gasps> to say that. Be still my foodie heart. Oh my I really don't. Shook it. All right, well then teach me your ways. I will. I have I love food. I'm a foodie. So, okay, we're going to find you some good pizza. I know okay. some great pizza places. And maybe on one of our next episodes, we I could try some pizza. Is Nona Slice good? Nona Slice is the bomb.com. That's what I heard. We Wait, could try Nona. One of our open house people told us that, too. Yeah, that's right. See, again, I love open houses. And what I personally love about open houses is just the conversations with people. Yeah. I don't host open houses. and I, 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 uh, Okay, let me start over. When I host open houses, I'm not charging everybody who comes in the door. Sign in, sign in, sign in. I want to have open houses just to have real conversations with people and, we learn and see about if pizza. I and learn about pizza and see if I want to work with them. And if they want to work with me, that's even better. But I have the best conversations with people and we yeah. learn about different places we love. Like, and most of the people aren't from here. Mm-hmm. And that that's what I was just about to say is that what I miss about Boston is that you know everybody. Everybody is, the roots are there. You You have their cousins, brothers, aunts family member that you know, and everybody is so loyal. Here, and I'm not saying it's worse, I'm not saying it's better, it's just completely different. Everybody's a transient, and I can't say that that camaraderie feels the same as it does up north, but then again, here, I just love the lifestyle here. I brag all the time about how we get to live where people vacation. How, 100%. How awesome is that? It's funny, again, being that I'm, I grew up here, sometimes you take it for granted, even though I, I brag about all the time, we do still take it for granted sometimes. And I have recently had some showings on Clearwater Beach 
and just, I parked my car and I just walked and it was right on the Gulf, right on the water. Isn't and I'm looking crazy? around, I'm like, we truly live in paradise. It's crazy. And We're let's so talk lucky. about how many people are moving to Florida because we live in paradise. So recent research, 1,300 people a day, come, a to day. The, come to the state of Florida. And that's why the Tampa Bay market is so different. We were just talking about this from other markets. That's not going to stop. People are just going to stop moving here. No. I mean, this is where people love to live. You hear you hear people getting nervous about the market crashing in different areas. You yep. hear that things are slowing down. Yeah, you might have bouts of a little bit of slowing down where the house might be sitting on the market for a little bit. But at the end of the day, people are coming here out of the woodwork. There was a recent article, too, that said it listed the top five places that people are moving to in the state of Florida. Guess which one was number one? I don't know. It was Tampa. <laughs> I mean, this is why, though, because we have so much going on. There's Clearwater, Tampa, St. Pete, all these different areas that people love to go. It's not just one place in the Tampa no. Bay. It's so many different areas. Dunedin, like there's so Everything. many different. If you like to boat, if you like to be on the water, we're going to recommend you X, Y, and Z. If you like to be more inland, and I, here's, here's what I do when I first meet clients. What's your lifestyle like? Tell me what you like to do. What do you do on the weekends? What do you do for fun? Especially if they don't know where they want to be, I find out what's important to them or what their lifestyle mm -hmm. is. And then I tell them, okay, well, if you like to be on the water, these are great places for that. If you want to be 30 minutes from the beach or 30 minutes from this place downtown, let's figure that yeah. out together. But there's so many different areas and it's, options for it, people. It is, it's a it lifestyle is. down I here. I mean, the kayaking, and even if you want to go further up north and go on fresh water mm -hmm. you know and just do the manatees and check out the springs oh my gosh there's just so much yeah i would like to do that i haven't done that yet really oh the springs are beautiful isn't the water like really cold it's, okay so the springs and feel free to fact check me on this but i feel like the springs are always 72 degrees all year round no matter what time oh. of the year they're always 72 degrees well, that's you amazing. can swim in the springs uh, Wikiwachi is gorgeous. So I've been kayaking in Wikiwachi. You can go swimming. There are water moccasins, and those are venomous, from my understanding. Yeah, so they're deadly. Uh, they're deadly. So aside from the ve the venomous water moccasins that will swim by you, literally, I was in the water one time with my husband. This is before kids, and I'm definitely afraid of some, yeah. sometimes nature critters and stuff. And I'm just in the water, and one just like literally swims by me. I'm like, oh, I'm screaming, get me out of here. Yeah, like that part's a little terrifying, but it's gorgeous. And I had one in my garage about two months oh, ago. No, no, it was no. a baby. It was a baby. Yeah. yeah. No, but, I, you know, that's the life. Yeah. I love looking at nature and being in nature, but when it comes to like things that can potentially kill me and stuff, I'm not, I'm not feeling that. But Wikiwachi Springs is gorgeous. And then Homosassa, if you go north, Homosassa Springs is, yep, Crystal River. Uh, one time I was in Homosassa and there were manatees in the water swimming around us. Like it's That's just nice. so cool to experience that stuff. That's nice. Yeah. So like, since you are from here, mm -hmm. have you noticed, cause we do hear people complaining about that it's becoming so saturated with people now. Yeah. Have you seen that change? Oh yeah. 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 I mean, it's funny because in Florida, the, you probably know this being here for 10 years in Florida, there's. So several different seasons. We don't just have winter, fall, spring. Do you know what I'm going to say? We have snowburn season. We have uh, love bug season. Oh, we have hurricane season. But I've de to answer your question, I've definitely seen it's a lot more crowded now. Traffic's a lot worse than it used to be. Traffic's been crazy. But again, that's the price you but pay for living in paradise. Season. We're yeah. also in snowbird season right now. Um, now, when snowbird season eases up, which is generally when I say April, early May, that's when the snowbirds tend to dip out on us. You notice such a difference when you go to restaurants. I guess I should I should let people know what snowbird season is who might not know. Some people don't know. So if you don't know what snowbird season is, snowbirds are the people that just live here during what? I want to say they come down around November, October, October November, November, and they leave around April, April May, May. When it gets really hot. So you'll notice though when they come because the traffic will be 10 times worse. Yeah. Restaurants are going to be busier. Like I don't normally have to wait here. Why do I have to wait all of a sudden? And you're like, snowbird season. Yep. You're going to see license plates from all over the country when it's snowbird season. We already do. We already do. But even more. But even more. Um, but yeah, definitely I've noticed so many things getting busier because busier. so many people are moving here. And again, some people hate it. Uh, being a realtor though, that's my job. So it, it is a great thing for me that people are moving here. But again, for the, the residents and stuff, I get it. Traffic's worse. Stores are busier. 
Again, price for living in paradise, I guess. Yeah, price. Yeah. Price is definitely going up too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, what about the events that go on in Tampa? Oh my gosh. Don't sure. you see a difference? Be well, you don't because you're not from any other areas. Yeah. But I'm not from here. So for me, it's like, I honestly could not believe the amount of events that are constantly going on all the time, let alone in the winter time. It's just, there's constantly, but it's not like a party, but it's a party. Like people, Explain that. <laughs> people don't get crazy, you know. It's not like drunk fest, right? It's not drunk fest. It's not like dangerous. It's not, but there's always an outdoor event going on on the weekends. Yeah. There's always some sort of festival. There's always an outing of some sort, whether it's first Friday in Tarpon Springs where they shut down the roads, live bands, restaurants, you know, might be giving out free wine. Um, then there's second Friday in Safety Harbor. Yeah. And then there's just constant, you look up events and there's just, every town has some sort of celebration. All, all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. Speaking of events, uh, the Florida State Fair is going on right now and it's going on next weekend, which I might go to. Have you ever been to the I Florida haven't. State Fair? I You've have, never been. I want to, but I don't know. I'm kind of weird. Like, I don't like the crowds. Like, I get Too weird. many people. I don't like that. Yeah. I and know. that's cool. Do you like rides though? Or are you sketched out about rides, fair? Rides are cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we went last year. It was so much fun. Um, I have an almost five-year-old and a 19-month-old. So we went a year ago, and Archer, my son, he was so excited to go on the Ferris wheel. He made us go on all of the different Ferris wheels when we went last time. And the food at the fair is like foodie heaven. Like don't they tell have, me it was good. It's it's good. Was the pizza? It's good? not healthy. You're, if you're trying to be healthy, don't go to the fair. Just don't even try. I didn't try the pizza when I went. But my husband got a donut burger where they take like a like a literal donut, glazed donut, cut it right in half, slap a burger on it. I don't know. All this fried food, like, but again, so go to the fair if you like rides, if you like trying different food. It's just fun and the weather's gorgeous. It's yeah, February course. right now. It's perfect Florida weather right now. I mean, the high is in the 70s. Like, it's just... Yesterday, if, yes, if today is like yesterday, yesterday was like perfect. It was like... Yeah. 76... But there was a breeze. Oh, yeah. That breeze it's makes just, such a difference, it's too. It's just so nice. And then in April, Dunedin has all kinds of cool events. They have, like, a Highlander Festival. Like, there's just always something going on. Gasparilla just happened in January, which was really cool. And that's so specific. That's specific to just Tampa Bay. I made a video about that and stuff. But it's, It was a really good video. You guys should go back and watch. She gives all the history about I Gasparilla. did get a pirate hat to wear, so... <laughs> But again, there's just always something going on. I, I love where we live. And I think that makes such a difference when there are people or clients who are moving here from out of state. Now, Marianne, how do you deal with clients who move here from out of state? Most of my clients are from out of state. Mm -hmm. And I used to think, you know, usually when you start real estate, you want to seem to have a niche and you want to find something that you're going to specialize in. And I always considered myself being an out of state specialist because I have done it. And I can't say that that's what I still specialize in, but by default, most of my customers are from out of state and most of them happen to be from up North, which is like the craziest that's thing. That's so funny. You attract so, them. I guess so. Yeah. Yesterday I was at a showing and I heard the woman say to her husband, Oh, hold on. I forgot my pocketbook in the car. What do you feel about that? I don't say pocketbook. She, probably doesn't say that's what we say up north mm, so okay I, as i was unlocking the door i turned around and i was like i know i love you already <laughs> and she's like, like why i'm like because you just said pocketbook nobody here it's just not the lingo no. so and i didn't really even know where she was from to be honest with you yeah. the minute i heard it i'm like she's from up north and that I'm is like, so she's funny she's my people she's my people oh, so i love that what was your question my question was um, I think it was, do you work with people from out of state or how, I should say, how do you work with people from out of state? So normally, well, did we already mention how virtual everything is going on mm -hmm. these days? So virtual everything ever since COVID, you know, everybody has had to resort on virtual. So normally with virtual, uh, out of state, excuse me, you are going to go. I normally do like a video for them. I do a virtual tour for them. I try to get the outside and the surrounding areas for them so that they can see, we really can't steer a customer, right? We can't right. say what's safe, what's not safe. So I try to give a glimpse of what it may look like so that they can make a sound decision for themselves. But for the most part, you know, I try to be as, as, as honest as I can. Like, yeah. yeah, this home has a scent to it. I'm not quite sure if you are into cigarette smells or just try to keep it as transparent as possible as if they're still there. Or yeah. sometimes 
they have family member or friends that can meet you. Which helps too. Which makes it much easier. But especially for me because my husband was in the military, I had to move from out of state and I had to literally look at a map and be like, this house looks cute, let's go here. And when we lived in San Diego, I'm not going to say the neighborhood, I'm not going to say where it was, but it was an area that I didn't feel safe in. There were burglaries happening left and right. I didn't feel mm-hmm. safe going outside. So I know how important it is for people and overwhelming it is for people to move from out of state. So like you said, I like to take videos from not only the house, the neighborhood, the outside areas mm-hmm. as well, the main streets, to really show them this is what it looks like going into the neighborhood, yeah. going into the home. And like you said sensory what does it smell like they can't they can't watch a video and see what it smells like if it smells like pets if it smells like an ashtray or anything like that we want to be the ones if to it tell hasn't them been that lived in and mm-hmm. it has that yeah so maybe a stale smell yeah. or something so i try to make it as easy for possible as easy as possible for people moving from out of state because it's so much it's, it's just a lot and then if they find the one then i say obviously come down anytime but if we find the one, typically what they do is they come down during the inspection period and that's their time to really get a feel for the house, see if this is the one for them. Deep but dive into it. Deep dive into it for sure. Yeah. But so anyway, Tiff. What you, How are we doing, guys? Yeah. Are we doing okay? <laughs> first podcast ever. It's the first one. We're gonna yeah. iron out the kinks. We're gonna try to do this regularly yeah. because we really want to show the behind the scenes i guess but not really behind the scenes but just just keeping it real yeah. like what really goes on in in real estate it's just not all glitz and glamour and we want to highlight the tampa bay area which we love so much we want to highlight local businesses we also want to answer viewer questions so if you guys have any questions that you want to see us answer on our podcast please leave them below like and subscribe and again we're kind of learning with you guys with this podcast this is a evolving thing for sure so we'd love to get your feedback ask questions that we can answer um next time we might even talk about how to get into real estate what to look for in a brokerage what's going on with the interest rates because obviously that changes so often as well but any questions you have leave them for us we'd love to answer them for you okay guys we'll see you next time thanks for watching it's been a latte fun Don't hate me. Bye.